Hello, I'm Daniel Huffman of somethingaboutmaps.com, and I want to share with you a technique for combining shaded relief with other map layers using Photoshop. So, shaded relief comes in grayscale, and we often want to combine it with something like a hypsometric tint, which I have here, or maybe land cover data, or satellite imagery, to produce something like this. This here is the final result that we're going to be aiming for in this tutorial. And what I'm going to show you is an iteration on techniques I learned from Tom Patterson at the National Park Service and Tanya Buckingham at the University of Wisconsin Cartography Lab. Now, when I used to combine shaded relief and a hypsometric tint, what I would do is this. I would put my shaded relief on top in Photoshop, and then I would go over to the opacity slider and crank that down to about 50%. And I'd get something like this. Uh, this is unfortunately a really washed out image. You can see some of the shaded relief and some of the hypsometric tint uh, combined, get a little bit of that light and shadow from the shaded relief being applied to the tint, but everything is really washed out and desaturated, especially if we compare to what we're aiming for in this tutorial. Look at how vibrant those colors are as compared to the simple 50-50 combination of the relief and the hypso tint. And that's because we've asked Photoshop to take all of that gray in the shaded relief and blend it into the color of the hypsometric tint. So it doesn't look very good. Uh, so this is what I used to do. And this is something that a lot of people uh, currently do. And it's okay, but it's not quite ideal to my mind. So let me put this back up to 100%. So how do we make this better? How do we keep those colors vibrant while still getting the light and shadow information from the shaded relief? The answer here is to change blending modes. So if I click on my shaded relief layer, I see this thing that says normal at the top of the layers palette. And if I click that, I see a whole bunch of different options for different modes that Photoshop can use to combine the pixels in one layer, our shaded relief, with the pixels below it in our hypsometric tint. And there's fun stuff here if you play around a little bit. So I could select a difference, for example. And now I see what's the difference between these two layers, and this gives me a sort of interesting inverted relief with uh, very dark, saturated colors. Or I could say, let's do a hard light, and I see a very harsh uh, combination of the shaded relief and the hypsometric tint. Everything is very bright, uh, except for some of these shadows, which are sort of dark and gray. And we don't actually want either of these two, but just to give you a sense of some of the different options available, and I encourage you to play around with these in Photoshop sometime. There's a lot of interesting effects that you can do with changing blending modes. You can also find out more information by looking online, by searching for Photoshop blending modes, and you'll get uh, a set of examples and descriptions of the mathematical formula that go into these different layer combinations. The one we want to do our shaded relief is linear burn. And when I select that, we get a pretty decent combination of the shaded relief and the hypsometric tint. Notice the colors haven't been washed out the way they were a minute or so ago when I was simply doing a 50-50 mix of the shaded relief and the hypso tint using the normal blending mode. Right, that combined all the gray in the relief with the hypso tint. Now, linear burn, on the other hand, doesn't wash those colors out. What linear burn is doing is it's looking at all the information in our shaded relief and I'll turn that to normal so we can see that for a second, and it's looking at how dark each pixel is, and then darkening the hypsometric tint by the corresponding amount. So we can see here, for example, this area, this crevice here in uh, this set of mountains is dark. So when I go back to linear burn, it darkens the hypsometric tint by a corresponding amount. I can turn my shaded relief on and off, and we can see here's the hypsometric tint, and then here's with it being darkened by the shaded relief. Light areas, on the other hand, like here in the shaded relief, don't change the hypsometric tint much at all because they don't have much darkening to give. So if I turn that back to linear burn, things don't change too much if I turn the burn on and off compared to the hypsometric tint. So that's how we can combine that nice shadowing from our shaded relief with the hypsometric tint. There's a bit of a problem, though, in that everything has gotten quite dark. If I turn off my burn shaded relief for a second, you can see the difference. Notice how light this hypsometric tint actually is. And look specifically at this green flat area here. Watch what happens when I turn the relief back on. Do you see how dark that's gotten? The reason is that linear burn darkens everything. If I go back to my shaded relief, set it to normal for a second here, notice that flat area that corresponds to the green. 
it's a medium gray, and what that's going to do is tell Photoshop to darken the hypsometric tint under it somewhat when I turn it back to linear burn. And we don't want that. Ideally, what I'd like is for these flat areas to be untouched by the linear burn. I'd like the shadows to come in from the shaded relief, but I don't want anything else to be darkened, such as in these flat areas. So how can we do that? Well, what I'd like to do is take my shaded relief and get rid of everything except the shadows. Let's throw the rest of it out. Let's make this flat area white, because white things do not affect our hypsometric tint when we turn to linear bird. They have no darkness, so they don't darken anything below. We'd like to get rid of everything except the shadows. We can do that by changing the levels of our shaded relief. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the top menu and click on Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. And I'm going to call this thing Shadow Levels. And what I see here is a histogram, which shows me how many pixels are at each level of brightness in our image. So it looks like I've got a lot of pixels that are sort of a medium gray, and not very many pixels that are dark or near black or near white. And I'm not going to get into detail about how the levels palette works, but it's pretty powerful, and if you use Photoshop very much, it's definitely worth looking into and understanding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this right light-colored slider here, and I'm going to start to drag it to the left. And notice how my image gets brighter as I do that. And I'm going to stop about here, let's say. And what I've done is simply tell Photoshop, take all the pixels that are this level of brightness and brighter and turn them all white. So you notice here, it looks like my flat area is white, or nearly white. And all that's left are my shadows. Everything else is gone. Everything else is turned white. So what's going to happen when I shift this back to a linear burn is these areas aren't going to affect my colors underneath at all. They're not going to darken them. Only the shadows remain to darken everything, which is exactly what we want. Before I do this, though, I need to uh, do one quick thing before I can shift uh, my shaded relief back to linear burn. I need to make sure that these levels only affect my shaded relief, that I'm only affecting the brightness of that and not the hypsometric tint. So I need to hold down the Option key, or the Alt if you're on a PC, and then move my mouse in between my shadow levels and my shaded relief layer. And you notice that my icon there, let me zoom in for a second here, notice my icon there has become a little square with an arrow pointing downward if I hold Option key on the Mac or Alt on the PC. If I click, now a little arrow appears here. And that indicates that my shadow levels only affect my shaded relief. It doesn't affect everything below, just this one level. Now I'm going to click my shaded relief, and I'm going to turn it back to linear burn. And let's see what happens. And right, see, so this is much better. Notice that not everything is darkened. Only the places with shadows are darkened. This green area here, for example, is just as bright as it used to be if I turn the relief off flip back and forth a couple of times between those two. It stays the same. Things only get darkened if they're in a mountain shadow. And here I'll very quickly turn off that little arrow, that little uh, clipping that I did before, by holding Option and clicking between the shadow level and the shaded relief, and you'll see the difference that makes. Now my levels is affecting my relief and my hypsometric tint both, and that's what this histogram represents. I only want this thing to change my relief, not my hypsometric tint, so that's why I had to do that. It's very important. So now we're getting close. We've got some really nice shadows that apply to my hypsometric tint, and it doesn't affect anything that's flat. But there's still a piece missing. Notice up here in the upper left, in this uh, river chasm here, uh, it looks incomplete, uh, especially if we compare that to the final image that we're going for this thing. Look at all that detail that I can see here on my final image that I can't see on my working image. That's because we've added only shadows to our hypsometric tint. We haven't added any light areas, any highlights where the sun is hitting uh, the side of the mountain and brightening it rather than darkening it. So we need to be able to do the same thing 
except in the opposite direction. We want to take not the shadows from our shaded relief, but the highlights from our shaded relief and add those back into our hypsometric tint. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is make a copy of my relief. And I'm going to hold down the Option key, or the Alt key if you're on a PC, and I'm going to click on my shaded relief and I'm going to drag this thing up until I get to the top and I see a little line at the top here. See that little line blinking on and off? Keep that line on and then let go. And I have just made a copy of my shaded relief. And this is something you can do in a lot of uh, different programs and especially in all the Adobe products. If you hold Alt and then drag something, you make a copy of it instead. So now I've got a copy of my shaded relief and my whole image looks a little messed up because this is set to linear burn and the one below it is set to linear burn. Uh, so it's burning quite a lot now. It's darkening everything uh, twice as much. So let me turn this back to normal for a second. And I'm going to double click on this and name this Highlight. And I'm going to name the one on the bottom Shadow. And I'm going to turn the shadow stuff off for a second. We'll just focus on lightening our hypsometric tint. The opposite of the linear burn for our purposes here is a blending mode called Screen. And screen works pretty much the opposite of linear burn. It looks at our shaded relief and finds the light areas and lightens the hypsometric tint based on how light those areas are. So something in our hypsometric tint, or rather something in our shaded relief that is dark will not affect the hypsometric tint at all. Something in our relief that's very light will lighten the hypsometric tint a lot. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit of information from the shaded relief here combined with our hypso tint, even though everything is very bright overall, we're starting to see some details come through in this area. But again, everything is very bright. We really only want to keep the brightest areas of our shaded relief and throw everything else out, just as we kept the darkest areas of our shaded relief before in our shadow image and threw everything that was light out. So let's do the same thing. Let's change the levels here. So I'm going to select my highlight here, and I'm going to put this back to normal for a second so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to go back to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. And we'll call this Highlight Levels. And again, I see my, my uh, histogram. And if you don't see this histogram, uh, you can always double click right here on the little image of a histogram in your Layers palette and that'll pop right up, and that gives you the uh, Properties palette, which you can also find by going to Window Properties. So here again I see the different levels for my shaded relief. A lot of medium gray pixels, not very many light, not very many dark. And I'm going to take the dark slider here on the left and drag it over to darken the whole image until all we've got left are the lightest areas. Right? Because I want only the highlights preserved. The dark areas here, when I set the mode to screen, the dark areas aren't going to change the hypsometric tint at all. Only the light areas will remain to lighten the tint. And again, I'm going to hold on Option slash Alt and click between these two things just to make sure the levels only affects the highlight layer. And then I'm going to go back to my highlight and I'm going to set that to screen. And notice now we get some great detail showing up here on the right side of this image, for example. You can see all those mountain highlights. But my colors in the flat areas, like this green, are unaffected. That's exactly what we want. And now I can, can turn my shadowing back on, and now the two come together to darken the hypso tint in the areas where it needs to be darkened, and lighten it in the areas where it needs to be lightened, and keep it the same, untouched, where it's flat. Notice the detail these highlights add. I'll turn them off. Right? This is just the shadow. And now I turn the highlights back on, and you can see the extra detail that gets added in an area like this, or up here with the river, for example. Right? We're adding some extra nice information in there, some extra detail. So the highlights and the shadows are both important parts of this. So that's the basis of it. And the nice thing about this is it's easily fine-tuned. Let's say I want a little bit more highlight. Right? I'm not seeing enough detail up here in this uh, area with this river chasm. I can just go and double click back on this little image of a histogram here and change these sliders. Let's drag this back down a little bit. Maybe I want a little bit more lightness here. Maybe I've got too much. I want to cut some of that out. Right? I can change this all on the fly. Or I could even say, let's change the, uh, the extent to which it's blended. Let's go to my shadow layer and change the opacity. Let's tone it down a little bit. 
right? I can turn that up or down at will. I'm pretty happy with how it is though right now, so I'm not going to change anymore. So, to review, we have two copies of our shaded relief. One is set to linear burn and adds the shadows to our hypso tint, and the other is set to screen and adds the highlights. And each one has its levels adjusted. We've adjusted the levels of the highlights to make sure that only the light areas still exist in the shaded relief, and we've adjusted the levels of the uh, linear burn copy of the relief to throw out everything except the shadows. And by doing so, we keep the flat areas the same color as they initially were in our hypso tint, or very close, and we only make it darker or lighter as necessary for the mountain shadows and the sunlit areas. One last tip I will add is about the use of linear burn. Uh, what I used to use here, and what a lot of people who are familiar with Photoshop blending modes might use in a situation like this, is multiply. But I've noticed, and if you notice here, if I zoom in, that it tends to make everything a little bit uh, dull, a little bit gray. Let me flip back between multiply and linear burn. Notice how vibrant the colors stay when I do linear burn versus multiply, which tends to gray things out. It has a similar function of darkening everything, but it also tends to desaturate a little bit. So I recommend linear burn. So there you have it. How to combine shaded relief with other layers in Photoshop. I'm Daniel Huffman of somethingaboutmaps.com, and I hope this was useful to you.